And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm going to be taking a look at Yido. This is a new game from Pegasus and Eggerspiel. It's a worker placement game set in a samurai world where you're trying to take your clan and accomplish the most missions and get victory points. It's a very interesting game, a uh, very beautiful board, but instead of talking about how beautiful the game is, let's take a look. Here's the board, which is a splash of color. This is the, the city that you are working with, and there's different pieces all around the board. And I'll, I'll try to give you kind of an overview of the rules, because I, I won't be able to give you everything. But each player is going to start with a player board that they have here that shows your clan. And it tells you what to do. It also has spots for you to put your Geisha and uh, a Blessing token. And also where you might be able to build different things. And a place to put the missions and your cards around the board. And it tells you how many of each type of card you can have. Each round is going to start off with an auction phase. And players will have a turn order. Which also determines how an auction happens. Now auctions in this game are once a round. By that I mean I can pick one of these things on the outside here to auction off. Like for example, let's say I want another disciple. I say okay, I start the bidding here at three. Each person can in turn order, makes a, or in table order, makes a uh, bid that's higher than the previous bid, or they pass. And when it comes back to me, the person who started the bidding at the number shown on the board, which happens to be three, I can then bid higher than everyone else and take it, putting my token there to show that, or I can let the higher bidder have it, in which case I would then pick another one. So everybody is going to win something because you can only win one bid. Once you win a bid, you're out of the auctioning. So the last person to put something up for auction is simply going to get it for the price that they pay on it. Now, as we look at each of these, what are you getting when you win the bid? Here you get an action card. Action cards can be used throughout the game to influence different things that go on. Um, some of them can be played to give you a benefit or, you know, there's just a whole pile of different action cards that are here. These cards here are like secret goals that at the end of the game, for example here, I'll get three points at the end of the game if I haven't completed any kidnapping missions. So I guess I'm, I'm, I'm against kidnapping or whatever, so at the end of the game I'll have that. So these gold cards, and you can have a couple of them. Here I'll get uh, some weapons. I would draw three off the top and pick one of them. Uh, you can see some of the weapons that are down here below in the weapons market. Over here I can add a section to my uh, place. I can add like a dojo um, or, or what have you. There's different areas. These will give me benefits. Also, they give me a place to send my disciples. There's some geisha. Here you get more disciples. And then over here are missions. Now, let's take a look at this, these missions first of all. There are four missions over here on the side of the board here. Green, yellow, red, and black. And they go in ascending order of difficulty. The green are the easiest, the black are the hardest. When you look at a mission, let's take a look here at this mission card. Each mission has a requirement that's needed for it. In this instance, you just need a disciple to be here at the dojo. Um, and then it also has a reward. In this instance, five coins. But they also have a bonus thing. So for example, if I also have a weapon, a bow weapon, I will get the bonus things also, which is a point and three coins. You can see that the missions will get more difficult here, for example, for this mission to accompany the daimyo on his visit to the emperor. Uh, here, I would need to have someone in location and a weapon, and I get a point and five coins. And then I need to have this building in my clan, and I need to pay one an, uh a blessing token. So you can see how that gets more difficult. Then the red ones are even more difficult. I need three different weapons and I need to have an, a blessing token and be in that location. And here, to kidnap the daimyo's son, I need to be in two different locations, have a geisha, uh, give up a, a token and, and two specific different weapons. And then if I want the bonus, I need even more stuff. So there's a lot of things that you need. When it shows an arrow here, that means you need to give up 
the item that you have. Otherwise, you just need to show that you have it. And the reward is going to be points. Maybe here you get an extra mission card, sometimes event cards, and coins. So many times you do the mission simply to get more money. Other times you do the missions to get points. So how do you go about doing that? After everyone has run through that round of auction phases, then there's an, uh, an event phase. An event card is drawn from the bottom. And there are actually different kinds of events here. Many of them are negative. Uh, there are some that say samurai, and those are extremely negative. In fact, I would recommend pulling them out because uh, negative random events tend to you know, irritate people. And maybe you like that sort of masochistic way to play, but it's not something that I'm as keen on. After that, we, you'll also be changing the weapons market here. Players then each have two disciples, or maybe more if they've gotten an extra one from the top here, but they're going to be placing these in turn order, one at a time, in these different squares throughout the city. Each square can only hold one person in it, so players will place those, and then when they are done placing those, players um, well, then they're going to resolve them. But before they resolve them, two things happen. If players have placed people up here in the market or down here in this region, um, down here, they'll be able to trade with one another. So if you put someone there, you can trade weapons. And um, that depends which one you're in, depends on what you can trade. But also, these guards in the middle are going to move. Now, there's a group of guards here, and these guards are moving depending on what color it is. Right now, it's blue. So it's going to be moving counterclockwise. But there are cards and events that might change it to red, in which case it will then move the other direction. When it moves, it always moves one space, but players might have a card that moves it an additional space, sometimes even two additional spaces. And wherever the guards end up, nobody there who has placed workers is going to be able to do anything in that spot. In fact, those workers are arrested. They're sent back to the player unless they are in excess of two, in which case you lose them and you have to get them again from uh, up in the spot where you get disciples. So, why are players placing all these people out here in different spots on the board? Well, it depends where they're placing them. For example, here, you can place them to get a victory point, to get another mission, to change turn order, to get a better spot in turn order. Down here, you can sell victory points for money. You're basically begging or change the order of the special cards, or you can even buy another disciple for seven coins. Uh, down here, you can spend money to get one of those extra buildings in your clan, or you can take a look at the upcoming weapons and change the order of that. Over here, you can steal money from the church. There's always a little bit of money in the church's coffers, or you can buy victory points with money. Uh, up here in the red light district, you can spend money or victory points to get Geisha, or you can spend money to get a uh, action card. Up here in this section, you can buy weapons from the weapons market. Each weapon has a cost that's underneath it that you can pay for. You can also buy more cards, even, or I'm sorry, you can sell your cards for money. Here's where you get the blessing tokens over here from the temple, and you can rearrange mission cards or event cards. And so there's many different spots, but sometimes you're putting these people in a spot to accomplish a mission. When we resolving these people, when it's my turn, we go in turn order again, I pick any one guy on the board and I pull him off, and I will either take the action that his space lets me do, or I will accomplish a mission from my hand. Say, for example, I have this learn when the Shogun will be off hunting, and that means I need somebody there uh, in the dojo or, or in the palace over here. So if I have someone here in the palace, I simply pull that person off, and, I, and instead of taking the action here, I show the mission card and say I'm accomplishing this mission. And by the way, I also have the bow in my inventory, so instead of getting five coins, I get eight coins and a victory point. I then discard this mission, and I do not get a new one to take its spot. You start with four of them, but I will be able to use, um, hopefully accomplish other missions as the game progresses. Now, the game is over after 11 rounds, or there is one mission in the black pile, which is entitled Kill the Shogun, and if you this one happens, this will immediately end the game. Of course, it's very difficult. You need four disciples in different locations, two Geisha, pay 10 coins, pay a blessing token, have three specific weapons and two buildings. It's not, a, not an easy task to pull off, but if you do so, the game will end. You'll get 14 points and two uh, bonus cards, so maybe that will win you the game.
All right, first off, I love this game. I was so happy to play this. You know, there's a lot of worker placement games out there, and I'm always looking for something new and different. And this wasn't actually really that new and different, but what it did feel was it felt a bit meaty on the side. One of my favorite worker placement games is Lords of Waterdeep. Shut the door. Um, when you play Lords of Waterdeep, it's a very popular game, but going on the different missions and accomplishing things, it wasn't super thematic with the Dungeons and Dragons theme. I thought Yido was very thematic. I thought, you know, for example, one of the missions has you send someone off to war and you get points for doing that. And when you do that, you lose the disciple that you sent off to war on. He goes away and you have to then get him back. That's fantastic. And I think the theme comes from the different types of weapons, the different missions, the board itself, going to the different spots makes sense. You know, you robbing from the church, you know, because you don't believe in that nonsense or whatever. The, the different places that you go, the fact that you can trade, I like that. I also like the auctions. I'm not usually a huge auction person, but I do like that once around auction thingamabobber where, uh, you know, it's one time. You bid or you don't. And if you don't want to bid or you don't want to outbid other people, you can easily just wait and just take one of the leftover things for the cost of that item. Now, the game has some pretty tight financial things. At the beginning of the game, you seem like you're overflowing your money. You have lots of money. The early missions give you money. They're easy to accomplish. But that money can go away pretty quickly, and a lot of things in the board cost money. So you need to keep that in check. Now, I am overjoyed at playing this game. But not everyone that I've played it with has liked it so much. Some people find it a little over fiddly. Others found that it was too long and a five player game is a bit longer. I think I would prefer to play this with three or four players most of the time. Uh, but uh, but I mean, wow, I, I, I didn't mind that. Now I did mention the event cards when I was going over it and how some of them, you know, especially the samurai ones, I won't play with those. They're just, they're really, you know, take that to your face there players. And players are already probably having enough troubles as it is. So the event cards can cause some pain. Taking out the really powerful ones is probably helpful. And some people that I, that I played with just hated the event cards, period. Uh, and some people hated the guards going around. But I think that's more manageable. And each player does have one blackmail card that they can use over the course of the game where they can blackmail the guards and still get to do whatever they were planning to do. So, with all this being said, love the artwork, love the theme. This is really a heavy, souped-up Lords of Waterdeep. So, if you played Lords of Waterdeep and enjoyed it, but found that it was wanting, this takes it up a notch. If you've never played Lords of Waterdeep, but you love the samurai theme and love worker placement, I think you will really enjoy this one. It is one that I'm going to keep adding to my shelves. It's a, it's a game that I'm just really enamored with right now for uh, many different reasons. Yido. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.